Today on Locked On Red Wings, was the season a success or a failure? You're Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a podcast producer for the Daily J, a WWJ News Radio podcast. And I did Wednesday's episode of the Daily J on the Red Wings, talking exactly about this topic. I spoke with Max Boltman. I talked to Ken Cal, and I spoke with Jim Costa over from 97.1. Got their very differing opinions on the end result of this season and what they thought. So please help me stay employed. Give that a listen over at... Uh, on the Odyssey app, the Apple, it's on Apple Podcasts. You can even go to www.newsradio.com. There's going to be a Daily J tab, so please give it a listen. My co-host today, as always, Scotty Bentley. Love to see him here. He is a freelance journalist for the Detroit News and a host, the host of Locked On Tigers. And our episode today is pretty straightforward, Scotty. I mean, we had an entire day to now sleep on and then probably complain and moan to all our friends around us about the end of the season cry cry mostly sob uncontrollably <laughs> uh but you know i i'm coming back today level-headed i'm glad we at, waited to ask this question for so level more level heads could prevail on whether or not the season was a success or a failure and you know if you're on social media everyone is seeing just a myriad though the the entire gambit of answers to that question i know last night it was popular to say failure but you know now like you and i are level-headed i wonder if that conversation is the same the next day so that's where i lead off with that's the main question that i'm gonna ask you scotty i'm gonna i'm gonna throw it to you first like when it comes to whether or not the season was a success or a failure where do you lie this is really tough man it's really tough. I, uh, you know, I think that this is difficult. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, 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 I find myself walking this line where I think that I don't think that it was a failure. They took another step forward, a uh, pretty sizable step forward in terms of points. Uh, they got improved production. From quite a few players, they saw a lot of their young core take a bigger step forward uh, than we expected last season or, or than we saw maybe from uh, two years ago to last year. And everything considered, you were going into this season when we talked about what we expected this team to do, it was what they ended up doing. Uh, and they they ended up being one of, if not the best team to miss out on the postseason, and that's right around where we expected them to be, like verbatim what, what we said going into the season, what we expected them to be, and that's where they ended up. So I, I find it really difficult to call this season a failure uh, unless you were going into the year and you were like playoffs or bust, you know, and 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 we were not. Uh, at least I certainly wasn't, and I don't remember you being either of that mindset going into the season. That all being said, I think it is impossible to ignore and accept and just be completely okay with the collapse. And, and I'm not saying that anyone is okay with it because no one is. <laughs> and it's the biggest talking point of the city and everybody's talking about it. But I, I it is it is not only fair, but it is extremely reasonable and and it you should change your expectations as the season goes along, right? It's an eighty two game season that starts when it's warm out and ends when it's almost warm out. Like it, it's not, you know, you have, you have an entire, almost half of a, of a calendar year that you're playing games in and, and yeah, you absolutely should change expectations. And when you have an eight point cushion in wild card one, the expectation from then on should be, well, if we don't make the playoffs at this point, this is a failure. And I think that that's kind of where I stand. Uh, it, it's, it's absolutely a failure from February on, 100%, 100%, it's a failure from February to the end of the season. 
But if you're basing it off of preseason expectations and, and what you wanted to see out of the team this year, excuse me, this year, um, I, I find it really hard to call the season as a whole a failure. Bang. Yeah, I mean, that that is pretty much precisely where I stand as well. You know, I was going to come on here and ask that black and white question, but then do, you know, pull a fast one on you and give you an absolute cop out of an answer, which people are going to hate. But I mean, we, we, we don't live in a world of black and white, Scotty. And, you know, I talked to, again, going, hearkening back to the daily J episode, heartbreaking hockey town. Um, give it a listen when you can. I, when title. I talk, when I talked to Max Boltman, he said the same thing is like, we want so badly to be able to put things in one category or the other, but like we live in a world of greats and we do. And in all reality, both can be true. Like in a vacuum, the season can be a failure because we had to adjust our expectations because of that cushion that you mentioned. And that's been mentioned on end expectations. And we did it here on this podcast. I can't ignore what we said. I can't like we knew that they were playing unsustainably good. But at the same time, where they were, they didn't regression doesn't mean collapse. You know, they could have regressed yeah. from playing unsustainably good at the tight at six game win streak to just playing 500 hockey. Hell, sub 500 hockey still would have gotten them into the playoffs with where it ended up. But instead, they completely collapsed. And yes, there are reasons for the collapse. And those reasons being are obviously Larkin got hurt again. Lion came down to earth. He was playing God mode during the, the hot stretch and he came down to earth, revealed again that he's probably an NHL backup at his best. And then of course the flu ravaged the team, but all of that is not an excuse. It certainly helps explain some of the performances we saw, but like even through that, the, you got to persevere. You got to steal a win regardless. And the Red Wings couldn't do that. So because our expectations were adjusted all because of the fact that we suddenly expected them to make the playoffs and not just in like wild card two, but wild card one, let's not forget. They were only two points back of third in the Atlantic division behind Toronto at that point as well. Like third in the Atlantic wasn't off the table. If someone wants to say that the season was a failure because of those adjusted expectations, I won't disagree with you. And I even borderline agree with you, but this is where I'm like, it's not black and white because you take a step back this was still a very successful season from the standpoint of a rebuild, right? And obviously the biggest thing they could have done was make the playoffs and get that playoff experience. But the Red Wings finished the season with 91 points, 11 point jump from the season prior. The fifth straight year, the Red Wings have seen improvement in point totals underneath Steve Eiserman. That is a success. They have 40 wins for the first time since 2016, 41 wins they ended the season on, but they hit the 40 win milestone for the first time since 2016. The last time they made the playoffs, they're above 500 in points percentage for the first time since 2016. Yeah. Was it 55% point share? I think. Yeah. yeah. Something, something along those lines. Correct. And their, their power play finished top 10 in the NHL, which was actually above where we said. We said at the bare minimum, we wanted them to be top 15, possibly top 10. They finished ninth. Penalty kill, we wanted to see in the top half of the league. Finished 16th, right there at the top half of the league. Like, they met or exceeded our expectations in a lot of different ways. We were asked, the over-under for fan to at the start of the season was, what, 86 and a half points? They hit the over. Obviously, the breakout year Dylan Larkin or uh, Lucas Raymond had 71 points. We didn't expect 30 plus goals out of him this year. We expected a rebound back into the 60s. He eclipsed 70. Moritz Sider, 200 plus blocked shots. I think he might still lead the league. I haven't double checked. 200 plus hits. The first Red Wings defenseman to have double or to have 200 plus in both categories since 2008. They're both turning into legitimate superstars. And Dylan Larkin, for the first time in his career, was over a point per game. And if he hadn't f battled through multiple injuries, he would have been a 40 goal scorer. It's hard for me to look at all that and tally up all those individual successes and say that this was a failure of a season when you look at it from the aspect of how the rebuild is going. They wanted to play meaningful games down the stretch, and they did. Was it a failure that they didn't make the playoffs after where they were in at the end of February? Yes. But is the season a failure because of that? No, because this rebuild still took a definitive step forward. And that's after a lot of thinking, after a lot of moping around the station and having the, going on the same tirade about Philly pulling the goalie when they didn't have to. That's still the conclusion that I came to.
it's it stings, it hurts, and it's going to. In, in the end, the best thing that the Red Wings could do for their young players is get them into the playoffs and get them in that experience. And I won't deny that. But this was this season was a massive step forward. Nothing's guaranteed. There's no guarantee they're going to do this again next year, right, Scotty? Like progress isn't always linear. And if you're replacing veterans with rookies, those rookies might develop into really like NHL caliber studs. But are you really expecting a rookie to come in and then re immediately replace that production the veteran gave you? That's not a guarantee. You might take a step back next year. That being said, my expectation is playoffs, which is very contradictory. But like that's just the realist. That's just how sports works. But yeah, we have a whole summer. To, we don't even know what the right. team's going to look like. Yeah, right. Like regardless, the season was still a massive step forward for the organization and the Iserman, the Iser plan. Right, and and that's the thing is the 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 like it it stinks. <laughs> like that that's really the the thing. It 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 stings really 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 badly. Obviously, right now, but I I agree with you. I I think that uh, this is as we both have said now. I I think you can differentiate expectations from February on versus, you know, looking at the whole season as a whole. It was, it was both a success and a failure at the same time. And that's, that's just how the world works. Sorry if that sounds like a cop out, but that's just where I stand. All right. Segment two, we'll start leaning into, and we'll see uh, Well, anything left we have to say about this, but I think we kind of made through, <laughs> made it through all our talking points. Then the first 10. So segment two, we'll move on to, all the news and notes, because there's a lot of it uh, that broke on Monday. Or Sorry, it's not Monday. On Wednesday here, after the season has come to its conclusion. So stay tuned for that in segment two of Locked On Red Wings. I'm going to talk to you guys today about Monopoly Go. You know, I've been told I'm a competitive person. Scotty, you think that's true? Uh, Enforcer Brian. Yes, I do. Enforcer Brian. Those are the good old days back when I could do that without my shoulder popping out of its socket. <laughs> well, if I do have a competitive side and Scotty says I do, and my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly what, where you can play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is messing with my friends. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly, but now I can also heist their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me the biggest Monopoly tycoon, shows me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in timed tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get to the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now, free on the Apple App Store or Google Play. Segment two, Locked On Red Wings podcast. Scotty, the big news of the day, and this is about as big of the news as going to get when you're eliminated from playoff contention. The Red Wings signed a 2021 second round pick. I think he was taking 36th overall left defenseman Shai Boom uh, out of the University of Denver. The Pioneers, fresh off a of natty. Uh, he's going to join the Grand Rapids Griffins on an amateur tryout for the remainder of the season, which means he will be playoff uh, support as well. You know, it, it's when it comes to Shai Boom, like you saw this entry level contract and I don't know what your, your response was, but mine was like, yeah, that, that tracks. I mean, that's pretty par for the course for this time of the year and uh, the caliber of player that he is. Yeah, no. And we, that's something that we've, again, your, your point, the it's that time of year. It's about that time, right? <laughs> that's, that's pretty much what, uh, what we expect it is. You know, I, I think everyone was just, uh, I don't know, it's the first piece of news since the season officially closed. And I think everybody kind of was, uh, 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 I don't know. It, it became a really big story just because it was the first piece of news uh, after that. But yeah, no, I, good for him. Awesome to see. Hopefully he can, uh, he can get some experience. I mean, this is like you said, this is a uh, pretty exciting time of year for Grand Rapids also just in general and we'll talk about some of the other reinforcements they got uh from the Red Wings themselves but uh yeah man I mean awesome for him awesome to to gain experience and and excited 
Yeah, absolutely. And he played the last three seasons with the University of Denver, won two national championships. His production has uh, has ticked up in each consecutive season. In his first season with uh, the Pioneers, just 18 points in 39 games, then 21 in 38 this year. The most games he's played, 43 games, and the most points, 36, uh, broke out for seven goals and 29 assists, both career highs for Shai Boom, I'm assuming probably a large part in just his him maturing as a player and getting consistently bigger minutes the more seniority he got. Fun yeah, fact, his brother Zeev is a – His brother Zeev also plays with the University of Denver and is going to be a pretty highly touted, borderline top 10 prospect yeah, in the 2024 draft. Probably putting it lightly, yeah. Yeah. His uh, brother Zeev Boom, uh, 50 points in 42 games, different positions – uh, actually, I'm sorry. Apologies. Same position. Both left side D. Boom with a, a booming production, you could say. Uh, but back to Shy Boom, who we oh. are talking about. Three-year entry-level contract. Six foot three, 220 pounds. He's a big boy. But, of course, he plays left side, which is where the Red Wings' best prospects all seem to play. I mean, that's not just the Red Wings. That's very common in the NHL. Yeah. It, it's harder to find right side D men. I'm right here, though, by the way, uh, <laughs> than it is to find left side D men. So, just another piece to Grand Rapids that I think is going to be very good, at least the, at the AHL level. And as a second round draft pick, you know, you think his ceiling, I don't think next year coming out of college, but uh, his ceiling in the NHL could be what third pair defenseman. This is, yeah, well, this is exciting. I think that the, the interesting part about this is honestly what this sets up for next year more than anything. Right. I mean, we obviously we want to see him, <clears throat> get uh get a, getting any sort of look this year would be cool just to see him out there in in uh some decent games but i i think the biggest thing is is really you know if this is kind of what they're committing to at the you know this spring what does that mean for him in the fall what kind of role will he have in the fall and yeah i'm sure we'll have rinaldi on over the summer we can kind of talk about that too oh yeah we'll have rinaldi and then we'll have tony ferrari i'm sure he hasn't been invited yet but just in case you're listening to tony prepare what we're gonna we're coming for you we're we'll going for it we'll, we'll get there <laughs> so because then we'll i'm sure we'll talk about zeev who i doubt will be on the board when the red wings draft because the red wings will be drafting what 16th as they're oh, the best team to miss the playoffs. Player prospect uh, profiles, man. So that time that's, of year. Not something that I wanted to be doing at this time of the year, but we, uh, oh. we're we here in the loss. Uh, yeah, and it, so, I mean, it's just kind of a footnote at the end of the season, but he had a good season with Denver, won another national title, so I'm excited to see what he can do as the Grand Rapids head to the playoffs. On top of that, the Detroit Red Wings reassigned both Aston, Zach Aston Reese and Simon Edmondson to the Grand Rapids Griffins as well. Zarnik was placed on waivers. He has to clear waivers before he can go down to the Grand Rapids Griffins. But I have pretty faithful, pretty pretty big faith. What's the word I'm trying? I have a lot of faith. There we go. English, it's hard. I have a lot of faith that Austin Zarnik's going to clear waivers and make his way down to the Grand Rapids Griffins. And, you know, while Zarnik and Z Zach Aston Reese aren't huge reinforcements at the NHL level, they're really good at the Grand Rapids Griffins level. And Zarnik especially had pretty good chemistry with uh, Jonathan Berggren. So those are huge reinforcements as the Griffins not only, I mean, they're still fighting for something. Like they're trying to get second and like lock up second seed in that division. So the uh, Grand Rapids Griffins, huge support. And I'm excited for Griffins playoffs, man. And th like, that's something, you know, talk about hell of a silver lining, right? Or monkey paw curling, even like we wanted to cover playoff hockey and it's like monkey paw curled. Grand Rapids playoffs, but I'm still excited for that because that's, that means something for these kids. Like that's going to be huge development for obviously Simon Edmondson played in huge games up here in the a NHL level. Like those were pseudo playoff games, higher, honestly, probably higher intensity still than the AHL level playoffs. But you know, for guys like Jonathan Berger and Marco Casper, like getting to the AHL playoffs is going to be huge for those guys. Cause that's going to be a level of play that they have yet to experience and getting that playoff experience, even if it's just in Grand Rapids, I think is going to be invaluable. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, uh, what did you say? I'm bigger faithful in it too. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that, um, I, I, obviously though, that, that was something writing was on the wall. We kind of knew that they were going to go down there and, uh, give, give GR some reinforcements, but yeah, that's super cool. And, and, uh, as we've talked about a lot throughout the year, you know, getting 
those higher intensity games in general is just good for development. And uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be fun to. I'm sure we'll talk about it plenty as uh, as it happens. Yeah, I'm honestly, most pumped just to see. I want to see Kosa in some playoff games. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if he's up to snuff. That's gonna be fun. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna have to another quick break when we return. The last thing we got on our news and notes, so it might be a sub thirty episode for you. Uh, we'll find a way to. We'll, Don't we'll, talk too soon. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we're gonna be we'll talking Larkin. Through. So. Uh, so stay tuned for that in segment three of Lockdown Red Wings as he was nominated for the King Clancy, King Clancy Trophy. So stay tuned for that. Lockdown Red Wings. Got to talk to you guys today about Policy Genius. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts in an on and is on hand to help talk you through it. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace with Policy Genius. You can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Talk to a team of award winning agents who will walk you through the process step by step. Easily compare quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. Policy Genius gives you unbiased advice from a licensed expert support team. They have no incentive to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust that their guidance is true and factual. Thousands of five-star reviews on Google and trust pilot from customers who found the best fit for their needs. Check life insurance off your to-do list with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash lockdown NHL or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on NHL. Segment three locked on Red Wings podcast. Scotty, I just want to mention that there were a lot of people who were upset with you for not wearing the aviators after the Red Wings uh, hmm. first win over Montreal. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's just, it was tough because it, you know, Kobe Bryant job, not finished, man. You know, like it was, it was just tough for me to, to obviously incredible game, incredible moment. We had a fun time, but um, need, you know, if, if I, I would have pulled them out, if, uh, if, if they made the playoffs for sure, but absolutely. So today the NHL uh, announced the nominees, each chapter rather announced their, the nominees for their team's respective, Clancy Memorial Trophy nomination. Detroit Red Wings, surprise, surprise, Dylan Larkin was the uh, nominee. The King Clancy Trophy is given annually to the player who best exemplifies leadership qualities on and off the ice and who has made a significant human con humanitarian contribution to his community. And so obviously Dylan Larkin, we know about how he's a leader on the ice and off the ice, but he does a lot of work. He's the, one of the spokespersons for the Ted Lindsay Foundation just he's going out there and helping high school students try and learn the game, trying to help high school students even be able to play the game because it's an expensive sport. So Dylan Larkin has been doing a little bit of everything here and there to try and spread the, spread the game, grow the game, and then help people get into it as well. So it comes as no surprise that Dylan Larkin would become the King Clancy nominee. But again, there's 31, 32, no 31 other nominees for this math man i don't i don't know 31 other nominees for this trophy so we'll see who gets it but that doesn't mean that he is undeserving he is definitely deserving a sure. on the red wings roster for that award yeah no it's it's like the walter payton award in, in the nfl right every team gets a gets a <clears throat> a nominee and whatnot but e even to be the player that's nominated from your team is you know an honor and uh means that you kind of exemplified what they're looking for in a, in a role model and a leader, which uh, Larkin very clearly is So, Yeah. And then we never really quite talked about either the Alex Lyon being the Masterson trophy nominee for the mm, yeah. player who most best exemplifies perseverance in the mm -hmm. NHL. And I mean, heck <laughs> Alex Lyon, man, a guy who for the huge chunk of the start of his career was regulated to AHL starts and spot starts here and there last year came on the scene and, earned himself a shot at an NHL roster. And then, I mean, as much as it stings when he, you know, he kind of came back down to earth, the Red Wings wouldn't have been in that spot that they were at the end of February without him going God mode. There was a stretch of the season where he had a 934 save percentage and that was like top 10 in the league. So, and top five in the league. So, I mean, it he definitely 
<laughs> represents perseverance on the Detroit Red Wings. I was a little was, bit surprised it wasn't Patrick Kane, but I mean, Alex Lyon was here from the get go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the uh, like Kane's was just like overcoming a, an injury that most people don't come back from Lyon. I mean, dude, we talked about it over the last summer, right? I mean, just is a, is a essentially a career AHL or, or, you know, with some spot starts and, as a as a backup and between last year's postseason and now this season has just catapulted himself into the conversation of you know being on the NA. He was we have to remember he was on the third stringer in and December. before yeah he, he was the third stringer going into the year he was the third stringer you know months into the season and if it wasn't for like a plethora of goalie injuries early in the season, we were like, yeah, they'll probably like try to sneak him through waivers and put him in GR. Like that was the conversation last September and uh, how, how quickly that changed. So, yeah, absolutely. So that about does it though. I think, right. We've, we've kind of covered our bases here. Our first off season episode in the books. We've talked about pretty much everything we wanted to get to. The main point of this episode is, whether the season was a success or a failure. And the answer to that is yes to both. <laughs> yeah, man. I, again, just tough to, to walk that line. Um, That's I, a good I, Johnny cash song, by the way. Agreed. It, it's just, it's, it's yeah. I don't want to just repeat myself and be a broken record from, from the beginning of the episode, but it's, it, you know, from February on, obviously a failure, not making the playoffs considering where you were at at one point in the season. Again, obviously a failure. I think it's really tough to look at 91 points and all the improvements we made in, in so many different categories and, and stats. And again, like the young core, et cetera, and, uh, and view that the, the season as a whole as a failure. I think a lot of people, if, you know, back in, in the end of August, early September, if we were told, hey, 91 points, but you don't know where that's going to be in the in the standings, but 91 points, I think a lot of people would have been like, yeah, that, that's that's good. Well, I'll take that. That'll be a successful year. So, Scotty, we are in off season mode now. Talking in circles is how we make it through. So Word. Don't, don't feel bad about that. That's how we're going to get it done. <laughs> really inspiring hope in the people of great content for the next season. For real. No, we got a lot. Like we were, we were making, we were making plans already about things to talk about. Obviously we have the obvious stuff, uh, recapping player performances, draft reviews, all that, but we're going to try and mix in new ideas too, because the Red Wings had a great season. So we want to, you know, up the ante of the types of conversations that we're having. What? That's the thing is like the obviously heartbreak right now just because of in the moment how it all ended. But uh, this is probably going to lead to the most exciting offseason in what the last 10 years of Red Wings hockey. Mm -hmm. I mean, legitimately, I think that that's probably a legit uh, a, a real argument. Yeah, absolutely. So stay tuned for that and so much more as we launch into offseason mode, uh, even if it is a little reluctantly. Stay tuned for that in seg uh, segment three. Uh, stay tuned for that in segment one of tomorrow and every episode throughout <laughs> July. Pretty sure we. Yeah. Have... <laughs> Again, math is not mathing for me today. I think it all, it's all been going downhill ever since I said Raymond's 31 goals and 40 assists gives him 70 points when that is definitely 71 just the other day on Twitter. So it's been a slow decline since. Uh, yeah, we'll be back. We ball, right? We ball. Same time, same place. To your team every day. Every day. Get wrecked.